So, we got this new lid technique. I don't know if you can see it. Okay. I've never had one of these before with this kind of lid. Oh, I got it. That's very difficult. And then look, it pops right in there. Convenient. Let's start the podcast. That's a weird lid to drink out of because the hole is all the way over there. Hello, buddy. How's it going? Welcome back to the All Right Podcast. Members of the best podcast, not the worst podcast. It's just an All Right Podcast. Boom. Back with another one, Nicola. Another week. We're, we're doing good. Mm, we're we're doing, jamming. We are jamming. And if you hear any noise in the background, we're literally, as you know, we're in a car park. We're here uh, in daytime, so we have the advantage of the bright light. Yeah, so it'll probably more better suited to the eyes. Yes. Yeah? Better and, quality. And we have, uh, speaking of better quality, we're using our camera now. Yes, we are. So, we're still in the car. We don't have a studio. Um, <laughs> this is our studio. This is our studio. Uh, studio podcast in the car. Do we could we could have called a podcast in the car, but I think the already podcast yeah. is, is it's enough. It's established now. It's established now. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, we have a few exciting things to say to you before we get into this week's topic. One, we have um, better equipment um, mm-hmm. for now we're not using the phone anymore we're using the camera so it's a little bit better for you guys uh, better quality and also we have the phone um, right here so hopefully it's better audio yeah. um, we'll have to look at the camera and then look uh, listen to, we'll have to listen listen to, and look listen and look yeah. um, to see which one be better audio and so soon but this is it we're going to be doing it like this from now on mm-hmm. um, for a while I think we could get a studio eventually. Imagine that. Yeah, eventually we can have our own little setup. And That'd be have like a table each and a microphone yeah. each. And a microphone. And, and yeah, yeah. Computers. The way we watch other people yeah. do it. I think that's the dream. Because yeah. it did start off, this podcast started off with just me interviewing guests on Zoom. Yeah. And then I took a break for a few months mm. and now we're back doing it now. And I think it's much better when the two of us are doing it. It's I, I would say it's our podcast mm. now more than just mine. Yeah, like we have that energy and we can bounce off each other and, you know, ask each other questions and stuff so it's not just one person talking into a, a camera it's yeah I found that difficult when I used to do that yeah, I, I'd have I'd to talk for a half an hour and I would find it if you go back and look on a few videos when it was just me halfway through you see that I'm not interested but I had to keep going or like your energy levels might drop and like yeah. you don't realise you're not as hyped up as you were yeah. at the start it's mad it's mad I'm going to <laughs> raise up the roof I'm going to raise up the roof right now <laughs> on this yeah so I can sit like that Um, we are kind of sussing out the lights and what way we should sit right now and mm-hmm. so so just bear with us but once you can see us and hear us yep. um, and also another good news that we have is, is that we might be getting a new logo from an mm-hmm. animator creator uh, Robert Stanley and um, so we'll leave a link down in the description to his work if you want to go check it out he's really he's really good and he's also yeah. going to be doing something for us in the future that we can't say now but hopefully we can say he's part of the Dream Factory yeah he's part of the yeah. Dream Factory Productions um, our production company mm-hmm. uh, with all of our friends and so um, mm-hmm. and we're making a film at the moment right now The Hitmen Um we're going to be doing a uh, funded that will hopefully be going live. So probably next episode, we might have that yeah. link out. We'll so leave that link whenever we have it. Yeah. So and um, the link will be down below. Probably hopefully in the next one or the one after. Mm. And any anything that you can put towards it to help us fund our project, we'll be really grateful for. And uh, we also have rewards as well. So like if you give a certain amount of money, you'll get a different award. So say if you give like five euro, you'll get a reward. But if you give like say fifty euro, you'll get an even better reward. Yeah. So just watch out for those. And if there's something that you're really interested in, try and aim for that reward. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, that'd be good. Well, but that's all we wanted to say. And I know it's like three minutes into an hour or so, mm. but um, this podcast only going for a half an hour or yeah. so. Um, so what is the topic that you picked this week Nicola? Do you want to get your burp out there? I did <laughs> Sorry I still have my Starbucks and we had a panini Yep uh, And, and so. for today's order It's a different order I got a peach green tea They seen it They seen it at the very start Because oh, I yeah. edited in the video So yeah, yeah. they were seeing you struggling How they to drink it They have a new lid And uh, I never used this before hmm. And um, I quite like it though You have to put your mouth Like literally halfway over the cup But I like it Starbucks have Starbucks is great to be honest. Oh yeah, it's I think so it's, good. Starbucks yeah. sponsor us, please. Sponsor. If you want to see uh, some shots of a Starbucks coffee and all, my Instagram's down below. Mm. And Nicholas is also. Nicholas doesn't really few, post. I have a few Starbucks. Yeah. Posts in you there. don't. Yeah, but you don't really post as no. much. No, I post pretty much like once a month, kind of thing. Yeah, and I think that's better because I keep over posting, and I'm pretty sure people just don't even look at me stuff anymore. 
I look at it. You look at it because mm-hmm. you're a nice person. Um, other Thank people you. are just sick of uh, my posts at this stage because I do photography and I try to get, you know. Yeah, but with photography, you need to post a lot because you need to show your work. Yeah, but it has to be unique. I'm just posting random stuff, like, you know, kind of. At the start, I wasn't. I was kind of focused. But now, I just, I just want to enjoy it. Yeah. I want to enjoy it. just taking photos and, and uploading. You, if you're it. happy with it, don't care about what anyone else Yeah, thinks. that's true. Well, what's our <clears> po- <throat> uh, topic this week? Our topic for this week is around birth and birthdays. Birth and birthdays? Yeah. I didn't notice. <laughs> so birth and birthdays. Yeah. So, so which do you want to start with first? Well, I suppose you start I with suppose the birth. We, we start with birth. <laughs> yeah. Um, we do want to say disclaimer, we are not pregnant. No. Nope. Um, we're not having a baby anytime nope. soon, just letting you know. No. Nope. Um, so let's just, just in case there's any conspiracy theories <laughs> going, oh, why are they talking about this for? Um, because it's an interesting topic. It is an interesting topic. Mm. Um, well, you can start off to kind of show me what, what you mean by that for birth. Well, I suppose obviously birth can happen in a couple of different ways like you have your normal you know biological birth you could have a c-section i think that they're the only two options are they you said loads <laughs> you can have in the water you can have a normal yeah, yeah. You can, like having a birth yeah you can do it different ways but i suppose the whole method of doing it you only really have a birth or a c-section if there's a pregnant woman watching this right now or some <laughs> a, a woman that was pregnant watching this Watching you explain that, they're going to laugh and go, this yeah. girl does not know. Yeah, she hasn't gone through it. No, I haven't gone through it, but like... Don't say you've seen on the... T- no, I wasn't going to say that either. But, but it's, it's a part of life, I suppose. Yeah, of course. It I think, is life. I think I'm going to start off with, hello, my name is Anthony Graham O'Reilly Jr. I was born on the 14th of July, 1995. <laughs> and that's my birth. Um, I was an okay kid, shy kid. Um... <laughs> I remember one time I went up to get a can of coke in the shop but I tripped and fell and my can of coke spilled out just after coming home from the dentist. I already said that. Mm. Uh, I already talked about that in an episode already. But I feel like I should bring it up again because it's very funny. And I have a story. Oh. oh my God. No. Wait. Oh. No, wait. What? Before we get into birth. Right. Well, this got to do with birth because this person was born. Right. Why? <laughs> Isn't listen, everyone born? Listen. Everyone's born right now that's watching this. Listen. Right. I went over to Starbucks the other day in Livy Valley. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. And there was this woman, and she was an elderly woman, and she was in a wheelchair. And she had shopping in her hand, and she was pushing with one leg. And I was like, oh, God, I feel so bad. Like, I feel terrible. Mm. So I had my earpods in, and I was kind of just walking by, and so, and she goes, excuse me. And I goes, and I took my AirPods out and I goes, she goes, excuse me. And I goes, yeah. And she goes, could you wheel me down to the bus stop? <laughs> I know that And story. I said, yeah, no problem. So I grabbed the back of our wheelchair. Uh, wheelchair. This only happened a few days ago. So I'd say about Thursday or something, yeah? Yeah. Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah. And I was walking with her. <clears throat> and I had my mask on. So it was very hard to hear me. And what happened was, is that she goes, it's a lovely day, isn't it? And I goes, yeah, it's lovely. And out of nowhere, her, vo- her, her voice and tone changed and she, and she literally sounded like the woman from Spongebob. Joe White goes, chocolate. <laughs> she literally changed her tone of voice and went, I can't hear you, speak up. And I, and I goes, it's a lovely day, isn't it? And I was shouting at her. So we were both shouting at each other, walking down the road uh, with the restaurants. People are looking at us and we're having a normal conversation but shouting at one mm. another because I thought she was deaf but she just couldn't hear me because of my mask. Yeah. I then went down to the bus stop and there was the 40, the 76 and the 40 and she needed to get onto the 76, right? Mm. And she said to me, she goes, pull around the corner. She goes, pull around the corner and get up there, right? <laughs> so I pulled around the corner and there was this guy in a wheelchair as well, right? And he literally, like for people that don't know, there's only allowed one wheelchair on Dublin bus, right? Yeah. I don't know what it is for other buses, but on Dublin bus, you're only allowed one wheelchair access, right? Mm-hmm. So the guy literally does this. <clears throat> looking at me like that, right? Just staring at me, okay? He's just staring at me. And he's staring at me to tell me that he's been here before her and there's no way you're getting on this bus. So I need to get on this bus. Yeah. She says, go around him and get on the bus. So I start <laughs> trying to do that, right? And she's like, speed up, me bus is coming. Remember, I was yeah. like that and stuff. And 
he went in front of us and she goes, go around him and I goes, I can't, he's, he's there. But I had to go, I can't, he's there. And there's people at the bus stop at this stage. <laughs> Everyone's watching you. Everybody's watching me. And the bus driver pulled up and he goes, he comes out and he goes, only one person wheelchair access. Yeah. So she turned around in front of everybody and went, ah, this is a discrimination. Ah, and I literally went, bye, see you later. And I turned around <laughs> and walked away and get out. And I had to get out. And I know this is, cr- I know, I know that's bad, right? I know that but is bad. But it's not your situation to deal with. Yeah. So I helped her down. I thought I'd done a yeah. good thing. I thought Karma was saying, here is a person. Help her and we'll reward you. Yeah. This is how karma works. You help out people in your life and you get rewarded, right? I'm not looking for re- for rewards, but I'd help out someone. It escalated quickly <laughs> and I think that by getting her there safely at the bus stop, yeah. she was saved and she didn't have to push her way down and it was a little bit of a hill so she would have had to go and down all yeah. that shopping. And when I came back out of Starbucks, I sat, I sat at the corner and I goes, right, that's gone now. I can drink me hot chocolate. I had a panini and I relaxed and I sat outside. Mm. And what happened was is that I walked back and I looked at the bus stop where she was going to be. And I do, literally done this and I swear on my granddad's grave. She was already looking in my direction through a crack no. in the feckin' bus stop doing this. Was she watching you? She was literally like this. <laughs> Staring me over. And, and I done this. I'm not looking. And I walked, but I kept looking. Yeah. And she knew I was looking. And I was like, I hope I never see her. And she's always over there. Oh, you've seen her before? No. When I w- was walking back to get my Starbucks after saying, Right, that's me done! Yeah. And I, I turned around and walked away. I don't like confrontation, you know that. Yeah. I don't like being in situations like that. <clears throat> and two people behind me were like, she's always here and she's always asking people to push her. And which is understandable if she can't be allowed to shopping. Yeah. But she's there every day and she always causes mayhem. mayhem. Yeah. And she always screams. And I don't know if it's like an illness, mental illness yeah. or something. Like that. I don't want to say anything. I just wanted to say, I'm not saying her name. I'm not saying what she looks like. I'm just saying, this is the woman. Yeah. And that's what happened to me. Now, I know that's completely different from what we were talking about and birth and stuff, but mm. human beings, birth, you know yourself. So that's the story I wanted to tell. Mm. Um, that's my story this week. Um, if, <laughs> story if, of the week. Story of the week. Um, for like that. Yeah, but I was born on the 14th of July. <laughs> um, yeah, no. I think birth is a weird process. I think the leading up to it, the pregnancy, it could be scary. Because eventually we're going to have a child, Nicola. Well, you're going to have a child. I'm just going to be a part of having <laughs> you're that You're just going to watch the journey. I'm going to watch the journey. And I have to live through that journey. Yeah. And I don't know what type of weird shit you're going to crave. Because think about it, girls crave weird yeah, stuff. Women can crave weird stuff. Like I think a lot of people like can just crave normal stuff, like sweets or sugary stuff or salty stuff, like that kind of stuff. But you do hear people like wanting ice cubes and coal and. I chalk. know someone that used to eat coal when they were pregnant. Yeah, when they're pregnant. One of my older friends, his mother, literally told us that she would eat coal. But like, Cold. before you're pregnant, right, you've never eaten, like, pre- presumably you've never eaten You've never eaten cold, no. So how do you know what the taste is like? You're, Why you're do you want it. it? I don't know. How does that come about? That's weird. I think we should look it up. Yeah, I no, think no, no, you should, no, 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 no. Okay. This is just our discussion. Okay. I thought, I thought we'd look up facts or <laughs> well, so. Well, we can, but, you know. But yeah, like, where does that sensation come about? I don't know, and I'd never understand because I'm not going to be a pregnant woman. Thank God I was put on this earth as a man. Because women, I swear to God, you have a so bloody hard from yous are menstrual cycles every month uh, to pregnancy and giving birth and have to pop out a big fat head out of a little tiny hole <laughs> and then you have to raise that and make sure that it's, it's to society standards reasonably, mm. you know, acceptable that you can trust that it's going on. You have to do so many things like, oh, no, I wouldn't be able for it. Yeah. But a lot of people do say that it is the woman that does everything after birth. I think it's the, mm, it, it's based yeah. on the man. Like obviously, it depends on the relationship you're in with the person at the time. Yeah. Like if you're in a healthy relationship and the man and the woman are both involved, or whatever gender, it doesn't matter. But you know, 
if the two parents are both involved in the child, then it's both parents' responsibility. Like, I, I don't see why some people have this, like, conception of, oh, if it's a girl, then only the woman can change the nappy. And if it's a boy, then only the boy can change the nappy. Yeah. That's so stupid. I've, that is weird. You know? I've never heard that. I've heard people before where, oh, no, I can't, like, the father would say, oh, no, I can't change the diaper because that's a girl and she has a vagina and I can't be... That's like weird. That. If you, know? you, if you... I have a weird suspicion, and correct me if I'm wrong. If you have a child, and that child needs changing, and you're the father, mm. and it's a girl, and if you see that that child has a vagina, and you have a weird sense of, oh, I can't look at that vagina, that's my daughter's vagina, yeah. I kind of... I think, in a weird way, you're trying to hide something. Either they're trying to hide something... As or in, like, child something. As in, maybe, like... Maybe, yeah. And they're just... They don't want it to... They're or a child, number but, two, they're lazy and they're using that as an excuse because they don't want to do it. A lot of men actually get freaked out by it and I don't know why. Yeah, like, I mean... Everyone knows what a boy's body looks like and what a girl's body yeah. looks like. So... You and know, a child it is helpless. Yeah, it shouldn't matter what it has. Like, you, you still have to look after it and care for it. In Ireland, right, it's only acceptable the past few years, I'd say, to, like, to say sex and talk about sex and mm. stuff. We're a very Catholic yeah. country. Yeah, I remember and hearing that as well on the Tommy and Hector yeah, podcast. But like, it's the way we're brought up, because, like, well, back in the day, everyone was brought up religious and, oh, no, you couldn't talk about sex. Sex so it was and a bad word. You aren't allowed to but touch the boob. And it's, it's part of life. Like, it should be... I think today's world is way more acceptable. Of oh, yeah. All that than... It's changed rapidly. Yeah. And we're not from that time of... No. When they were growing up, you know, in the 70s and the 60s, 60s, 70s, 80s, you know, the 90s. And I think it was the 2000s that start getting acceptable. Now are they... Because the, in the 80s and 90s, comedians would always talk about sex and, you know, and even in comedy shows that they'd be like, oh, that's not acceptable. And people would walk out. And that's in America. Yeah. Like, so imagine over here in the 90s. But I think as well, the world is more educated about the human body yeah. and about science and stuff like that. So, yeah. like... It shouldn't. It's not something you should like shy away from. Yeah, I I agree. No, I do agree. And something else we shouldn't shy away from. And it's a good segment to slide in. Mm. And I don't mean slide in because this is discussed in the segment, but not discussing, but discussing the slide into the whatever. Okay. Um, right. The segment slide in. I think that what you what's your opinion on the male the male man being there when the baby is being. In the, delivered. in the room Yeah being I, delivered. I think Obviously it's up to the man You know If they feel comfortable or not But I think It's important for the man To be in the room When the baby's being born To see life come into Yeah her. also to see life Obviously And to take care of the woman To make sure she's alright And to help her get through it Yeah And also like to, to witness that experience Because I know a couple of people That have told me before Like men Grown men that have said They were in the room for either they were there by accident or they were meant to leave and the baby was just coming and they had to stay How'd you in for accident? I need to go to the toilet no, no, no. and you walk in and you go, well... No, I remember this story uh, someone told me before, like, um, his wife was giving birth yeah. and he went he went to go get the, the nurse, like, to go yeah. call her. So he had... He was about to leave the room but the baby was, like, on its way so he <laughs> had to run back and help the woman. So he literally seen the whole birth and experience and he said, like... It was the best experience of his life. He could not. You can't take that away from someone. You know, it's only going to happen a couple of times in your life, depending on how many kids you have. Yeah. So I think it's important to be there it's, to witness it. It's very sad that some people won't ever experience that because some people can't have a baby. Yeah. And they or won't don't be able, want to. Yeah. Or, you and, know. and that's the thing as well. Like a lot of people are like say the likes of like someone is with someone for a very long time and then they find out they can't have a baby, but one person wants to have kids and then that kind of causes the relationship to yeah but you know, there's so many fade. other options than I know but some people just own, mm. like I know adoption is so important like I think it's important that I think people should adopt mm. but it's just something different about your own that's your own DNA mixing yeah. with that person's DNA and you can see both of you in that life. child and yeah. you go through that process it is it hits different I'd say I'd say yeah. it's so different. Yeah, I'd say it would, but like at the same time, if you adopted a child, you would treat it as if it was your own, yeah. hopefully, and 
my ma used to um, foster children mm. uh, until they found a home mm. um, and I'm I'm used to, I was used to having foster kids come in and out of the house yeah and there was already five of us yeah and then she done I that and we no, like, I don't know how she done it but if we were to adopt a child and I know this sounds so terrible mm. right to some people to, to people but I'd I'd you know as a person you'd look after them mm. but I wouldn't have that love for it but you don't know that yet because you've never I don't know because I've I've been around so many people <clears throat> and different people of different ages yeah I, but, I couldn't but I suppose when you were a kid right probably one you didn't really understand maybe and two like you knew they were only there for a short time and then they were going I didn't so, even know that I thought yeah. they were with us forever and yeah, then I'm like yeah. See, I'd wake up one day and, we're, and go, they'd be gone. where's Patrick so you wouldn't know the whole story but if you were an adult and you adopted a kid you know that that's your responsibility like for the rest of their life like you know I wouldn't like to adopt a child I wouldn't I wouldn't like to foster a child because if I did get attached to yeah, it'd be very hard. it'd be very hard to see them go and yeah. you'd want to see photos that's of them that's the thing like if you're going into foster it's the same I know I'm not trying to relate it but it's the same as like animals if you foster an animal you'd have to be aware it's nurture it, you're talking you're about nurture it back yeah. eventually we're not talking about oh I uh, we're not talking about oh um, animals are the same as humans and stuff. It's it's the whole thing around that conversation is nurture. You're yeah. nurturing a, a living thing, mm. a breeding living thing, and whether it's a man or a woman or a cat or a dog or whatever, yeah, mm. it's nurture at the end of the day. It's the emotion. It's yeah. the feelings, and you're giving yeah. them a safe environment to yeah. grow up in. And it's I think it's I think it's I don't know I I said to you. That I want to adopt mm. a child when we eventually, like, when we have our own kid and then we can adopt a child as well, you know? Yeah. And kind of give them an upbringing. But we said not from a baby, kind of around five or seven or, you know, like, yeah, well, some that can walk around, you know, walk, talk. Well, I don't really have any issue with age. I do, because I'm not doing that whole. Like, I want the child to be able to walk and talk, and I can talk to it, and I can say, what do you want? And they say, juice. And I'll go, but, let's go to the fridge and get some juice. But do you re- that's the thing that I kind of have a problem with as well. Like, some people think, okay, a child only talks when it's, like, two or whatever, and it can tell you what it wants. Like, it wants a drink or it wants food or whatever. But I've seen it for myself. Like, there is other ways of communicating to babies and children other than talking, right? Yeah. If you do sign language to a baby from a very young age... Before they're able to speak, they can sign language you back and tell you what you want. I've seen it. Lovely. And I think that's a very important um, way of communication to give to a child a sign language. Because one, like, first of all, they're a baby, they can't talk, so they have to communicate to you somehow. Yeah. And two, they can learn that language and use it in their life. Like, if they come across, you know, someone that needs to communicate through sign language, they mm. can do that and they can understand it. True. Sure. Sure. It's important. And well, come here. We're kind of getting off topic a bit. Um, so let's move on to birthdays. Birthdays. Yeah. Whose birthday is it? Whose birthday is it? Whose birthday is it? Whose birthday is it? <laughs> um, it's today. It's my brother's birthday. Um, you're making a cake. Cupcakes. A cupcakes. I don't know why you're making cupcakes. Because it's his birthday. Shocking. <laughs> I wouldn't. Everyone needs to have some form of cake on their birthday. Why are you talking like this? Because like every... it's essential. You're not Italian. <laughs> have you ever gone a birthday without having a cake? Yes, many birthdays. And was it a bad experience? No, because I don't like cake. I don't like cake. You, you like know chocolate that. cake? Yeah, but I'm not a big fan of even chocolate cake. But everyone has a little bit. I'd rather you get me a chicken roll on my birthday than a cake. <laughs> a chicken roll cake? No, but give me a chicken roll and put a candle in it. <laughs> Put them the whole way along the roll. Put them, no, yeah, but don't damage the roll oh, enough. The crispiness of the roll. Yeah, 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 don't damage it, don't damage it. Um, but yeah, birthdays, I have had good birthdays when I was younger, and I think when I got, the more I get older now. Do you realise I picked up a green stick in between there during the week? Did you? I was like, when did this get here? <laughs> yeah, That's gone forever now. Have to pick it <laughs> um, but my birthdays have... We've always celebrated birthdays in my house when I was younger and everybody else was younger. We'd get bouncy castles, we'd mm. invite the whole neighbourhood around, like literally on the road, not yeah. the whole neighbourhood, but the road, and we'd blare music and we'd all be on the bouncy castle and we'd have food and we'd be hyped up on fizzy drinks and, 
yeah, it's just it's just mad, and I have loads of stories about bounce, bouncy castles that I can say in another time, and they all involve death. We death, all, like as in we almost died near death experience. So not death, but no, close near to near death, death experiences. <laughs> um, we almost did, did. Like bouncy castles are lethal. Oh yeah, and but trampolines so much are lethal. Fun, though. Oh yeah, they're fun, but they're lethal. Yeah, and uh, I have so many stories about trampolines as well uh, that I could say, and I think I'll hold that for another podcast. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was just. But I don't know, like, like when you look back on your childhood birthdays, they were amazing. But a lot of people, as adults, they don't like birthdays when they grow yeah, up. Yeah, because we're realizing that we're getting older. Yeah, that could be one thing. But some people just don't like birthdays. What hap- What happened with you when you found out you're going to be 24 this year or something? Or 20? No, it can be 25. You're this going to be year. 25 this year. What did you, What were you like? It literally back? hit me because I thought I was only turning 24, and yeah. I was like, oh no. <laughs> and you were literally old. sitting on the chair going. Oh, oh no. How could this be? I'm actually turning 25. Yeah. I'm not turning 24. Oh no. Oh no. It wasn't oh, like that. Oh no. It wasn't that dramatic. But you're turning 26. So okay. I still have another year on you. It's fine. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. 24, no. 26. You're still there. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm turning 26 on July the 14th, 1995. I'm not, I'm not on 1995 <laughs> We're past 1995 yeah. now But it's so weird Because I'm seeing that Do you know Laurel and Hardy? Yeah Do you know Stan the skinny guy? Yeah He was born in 1890 right. And he died in 1965 Right Right Like I would look at gravestones And see uh, 1970s and 1980s mm. And it scares me Because I know around that time In the 20s of like this era now yeah. that that's where where my death day is gonna be yeah around them and it scares me and then people a hundred years from now will be looking back and like whoa they were born in 1995 we were born in 2057 yeah or 2090 <laughs> 2095 like think about it yeah like a hundred years that's mad yeah but I'd rather be born now than back in, back in 18 oh yeah same yeah because it's it's look what we have around the us the technology the way the, the world the is the transport the buses um, everything like that and it's it, it's great yeah um, but imagine 100 years from now would you say it'd be more corrupt and would it be more wars And I, I think we should save that for another podcast yeah that's another because episode that's another episode but I know we didn't get through but wait lot. wait before we sign off we still have two minutes right okay okay what do you think about surprise birthdays I don't like them. I scared. I get scared. I get Why anxious. Are you scared? I got a See, surprise birthday on my 18th birthday. Yeah. I went out with an ex girlfriend. She brought me to Livy Valley. Uh, we went there. We got some food. Came back, and everybody was out in the garden. I was like, "What the fuck?" And they were like, "Oh, uh, surprise!" And I was like, <laughs> "Fuck!" And I went in, and all people that I hung around with friends at yeah. the time were all there in the bouncy house at the back. Bouncy castle, not bouncy house. Bouncy castle at the back. Bouncy and, castle for an 18th birthday. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and. We were all on a bounce castle having laughs and people were getting drunk and falling yeah. and people almost getting sick around the back and yeah. all. I think the, like, as a person... That was one of my best birthdays. As a person who's getting the surprise birthday, you don't like it. But I think when you're preparing a surprise birthday for someone else, it's more exciting mm. yeah. to, do, to make the surprise yeah. than actually get the surprise. I think so. You know. Um, so this camera only has a minute left to record. It yeah. shuts at 29 yeah. seconds. So, um, yeah, guys. So that's it for this podcast. I'm sorry that we kind of had to cut it short. And we were kind of mm. getting into something. Um, let us know what you think about the podcast so far. What you think about the new equipment. If you made it this far, give it a like. Uh, subscribe. We're on 115 subscribers. Our mm-hmm. views are going up a lot now. Yeah. And our view. I know a lot of people say views don't really matter. No, they do. Because the more views, the more subscribers we get, the more we can do this. And we can get a better mm. studio and equipment. So we, we have a, we're doing the long run. Yeah. What we're going to get. We want to get that audience connection and get our, our crew and our yeah. our audience going. Yeah. Right, guys. So, thanks for watching another ep- week's episode of the R.A. Podcast. Remember, it's not the best co- podcast, not the worst podcast. It's just... An R.A. Podcast. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Remember, smash that uh, like button and also that subscribe and hit the notification bell. Guys, my name has been Anthony. I'm Nicola. And it's been an R.A. Podcast. Guys, thanks for watching and bye. bye.